Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, MTK Global. The Matchroom's fight bubble for the world title triple header, headlined by Katie Taylor and Miriam Gutierrez, joined by Terry Harper, who defends a WBC world title on the undercard. How are we? I'm very good. Uh, just relaxed, chilling, and um, I can say this hotel beats the holiday in, so I'm on holiday. <laughs> I was going to say, at the holiday in, when I went to the Peterborough one, I got a cheese sandwich. I turned up here and I got a chicken curry, so I know what you mean about that. Um, how do you compare this to fight camp? Because... I mean, out the f- I wasn't in fight camp, but out the fighters in here, it seems like you, Steffi, and your team were sort of more involved in sort of the activities you were at out last night. You were playing table tennis, Steffi was having a chat with everyone. So you seem very involved. You sort of try and take the fight perspective away and just relax a bit in it. Um, so from what we learned from the last camp, we literally went into the fight bubble and we kind of just isolated in the room. We didn't really mix um, with everyone else because everyone's on each other's toes. Uh, I could be sat there and Tasha sat on the next table. So, whereas this one, we've kind of experienced that. Um, it's a lot better set out here. We've got games room, cinema room, gym. Uh, we've got eating area, this balcony area. It's just loads better. And uh, like I said, it's just it's just a lot more relaxed. Still putting in that work you were doing in S&C session this morning, am I right? Yeah, just a, just a taper session. Um, just reactive, uh, staying sharp and ready, to, ready for Saturday. You've got a new S&C coach. I've seen you mention in a couple of the media Zooms as well that your S&C coach has been a big part. And perhaps something you learnt from your last fight as well, that you needed to bring someone in and, I don't know, get that little bit of extra 1-2%. Yeah, so we, we've always been a tight, a tight team. It's literally like me, Andrew, um, we've got Ray Doyle. Um, and then after the fight with Tash, we we, we realised improvements needed to be made and we need to make, make some changes. And that's when we decided to get Danny on board. And it's it's I wish now, looking back, we did it sooner, but um, we only made that decision through the results with Tash. So I always say that kind of blessing in disguise and um, it made us sit back and look at what we need to change. I'll take it back to fight camp, and I'm sure you've had this a lot, but what have you learnt from that? Because on the night, it's an amazing fight, and you probably don't realise that the next couple of months, what the reaction's going to be. It was a positive reaction from a fight sense, but there was also quite a lot of negativity and bitterness as well from uh, Tasha and Joe's side. She thought they won the fight. So what have you sort of taken from not just the fight camp, but that whole sort of month, two-month period? Um, I kind of just came away from social media a bit just because it's, it's just like just negativity all the time and um, obviously I was good with the results um, I remember after the fight I was crying Lee rang me up morning after <laughs> after the fight and like I answered the phone and like you know when you're doing your silent crying it's going Terry Terry are you there but uh, yeah it hit me hard but um, we went away and then it was time to reflect and it was a good fight like you said and um, I wouldn't want to see these good fights and I have to kind of give myself a pat on back because I went in with uh, a top, top elite uh, boxer, Tash, and I held my own against her. So I, I'm happy with, with my performance, even though I know there's a lot more that uh, I can improve on. And yeah, I'm just mumbling on. Do you feel like perhaps things have been a bit unfair as well? You were dragged into deep waters and you shone. Let's be honest, you proved that you've got heart, you proved you've got boxing ability and that you can bite down on your gum shield. Do you feel like there was a lot said that's perhaps unfair criticism of yourself? Um, see, I, I, like I said, like you just said, I got took to them deep waters. I believe these are the fights that every boxer needs for him to learn and uh, for him to grow. And that's what's going to take me to the next level. Um, I forgot the your question. <laughs> No, I just do you feel like the criticism has been unfair at times? Oh yeah, I'm like I'm I'm still learning. That that was my eleventh professional fight. Um, I had sixteen junior fights as an amateur, so my my experience is very little, and I'm learning on the job. Um, twenty four years old, and like I said, I went in with Tasha, uh, ex Olympian, someone who's been all around the world at four hundreds of amateur fights. Well, I don't know how many she had. Like that's just a rough guess, rough, yeah. but. Uh, and yeah, and I went in and put that performance on. And uh, like I said, I can only come away from that uh, being proud of myself and knowing um, 
I've shown that I've got art and uh, I dug deep. I'm only going to ask one more question because that's not what we're here for. But um, Great British boxers have been built on rivalries. Ben Eubank, we're looking to build one with AJ and Fury, who are obviously two great fighters. We're looking to build these rivalries. So is it all positive anyway if people are talking about the rematch between you and Tash? Is it all positive news? Because we want these British, especially in the female scene, we've never had a real British rivalry you can get stuck into. So is it all positive news anyway? Yeah, it's, it's, it's all part of the spot, isn't it? Um, like, for me, I'll just leave Tash and... And Joe talking because it's just building it, and it's um, it's going to get the fight out out there more. And when when the fight does happen, there's going to be a lot of interest around it. So um, they're doing a good job. Katarina Thunders, you've I spoke to her yesterday. She said you've been in her sights for a while. This has been bubbling for quite a while as well. Um, talk to me about her. Um, so I know she's been training and preparing for a long time for this fight. Um, she was sparring partner with Eva Wallstrom. Um, she's been. I don't know how long she's been interim champion for, um, but I know I know she's been waiting a long time for the for her uh, for her chance and her shot at the WBC World Title. So um, from what we what we've seen of her, she's not scared to get in scraps. She's a very game opponent. Um, come forward, she's got I've got to watch out for that backhand and stuff. But yeah, I'm, I'm I know I'm in for a tough fight on Saturday night, and I'm, I'm just excited to get to work. And I don't know if this really means anything, but I know she's got a good kickboxing background. But I suppose from a boxing perspective, she's arguably less experienced than you, and especially at a top level as well. Yeah, I just hope she don't uh, try and kick me at five. <laughs> Roundhouse to the head. And it's... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we haven't been practising any defence for that. Uh, I forgot a question again, I'm terrible. <laughs> I what are you talking get, about? <laughs> I don't want to get kicked at that. <laughs> yeah, understandable. Um, what are you looking to show in this fight? I mean, you've gone away, worked on stuff, as you do in any camp. Um, How's the camp been different? I suppose different limitations as well compared to your first camp with sort of the openness of how shut off it was with COVID the first time. But what have you learned and how different is your camp been to the first, uh, fight camp? Sorry. Um, so this this time we've had a chance to work with, obviously Danny, get more faces in. I've had my sparring partner Raven up, big up Raven. Um, so she's been coming to ours and staying over the last 10 weeks or so. Um, and just getting that good female competitive sparring in which is re realistic to the to the fight. Um obviously got I'm repeat oh we, we we were sparring over in um a good friend Jimmy's gym which is a bigger ring, getting used to the big uh, ring on fight night. Just everything we just um what, what else? Yeah, and, and, and training wise um, we took everything back to basics. Um, we realised what things I was doing wrong, like rushing in, coming in square. So um, we Andrew, we took everything back to basics and just worked on them. And this card as well. Um, when we look back, say, in a decade's time and women's boxing's flying even more, this will be sort of the precedent that's set top-level female boxing as something that everyone can get used to in the UK. We've seen women pop up on cards and headline cards as well, but to see three world title fights at the top of a bill. I mean, you must see immense pride in the fact that you're one of the fighters involved in that. Yeah, I was thinking in my room earlier that when I'm old, fat and retired, uh, I'm, fat. <laughs> I'm going to be looking back at this like historic moment. It's, it's just crazy that I'm part of it. Part of it, And I can only thank uh, Eddie, Matchroom and Sky for allowing me to be part of it. And um, yeah, it's special, it's special. Obviously, I know and Sky mentioned it about a million times. I know Katie's one of your heroes as well. When you're sort of just standing up there, she's got all four belts, which you hope to have one there. You've got your WBC. Rachel Ball's up there about to fight yeah, for a world title as well. And your IBO as well. Yeah, can't forget. Apologies. But yeah, and you're standing next to Katie Taylor, someone who's an idol of yours as well. I mean, do you have to pinch yourself at times? Yeah. Um, obviously, when we went into the room for the photos, I just, just stood there watching Katie do an interview. And it's just, just yeah, like, an aura that she gives off. It's just... It's just someone that I do look up to and um, stand inside her with all them belts. I just, I know that's the dream and the goal, end goal for me. Do you ever think about stepping in the ring with her? Was that just saying a bit far-fetched? Uh, see, this, see, for me, Kate is the best out there um, in my eyes. Um, greatest of all time. And um, I always say, why would you not want uh fight one of the greatest so if i ever got the opportunity to share him with katie then that would be amazing that's that's no disrespect but just being able to share with someone who's um who who inspired me to and the reason why i'm here so 
yeah, if, if the fight <laughs> if the fight ever happens, then it happens. But um, I just wait for Andrew to tell me I'm fighting. Terry Harper calls out Katie Taylor. That's my title. That's my title now. <laughs> it was that whole idols become uh, rivals thing again. Oh, I'm going to clickbait this. Don't you worry. <laughs> um, and I just want to talk about your best friend, Michaela Mayer, as well. Um, oh. Michaela Mayer. She's got some. <laughs> oh. Have you not? No. Oh, I, I saw her say a few things. She's some sort of world champion or something along those lines. You're not too aware? No. It's, uh, she sounds like a nice girl. Probably called the best friends, to be fair. <laughs> You're a fucker. <laughs> when you prepare for an interview, you don't prepare for something like that, so now I'm just sitting here with a mic like a dickhead. <laughs> um, at first, I was like, sorry, why could I wait? Division's wrong. Um, yeah, are you going to say anything about her? Do you know what? She's doing a good thing. She's getting me known over there in America, so... Um, I have come off Twitter because I'm focusing on Saturday night. Uh, I'll just leave her to do the talking. She can build my name up over there and then um, I can't wait to get paid to punch her in the face. Are you ready for that superstar status? Because I sort of sometimes see the way you are in your interviews and I feel like you, not that you don't believe it, but you don't believe you have fans across the country. You don't believe there's people who look up to you, but you really are. And some of the guys at Matchroom were saying yesterday, you're going to be there to front the women's division for you know potentially the next decade are you ready for that see still now when i'm walking in and seeing all the photos um me outside katie um it's, it's yeah it's just surreal and uh, i think it's only just starting to it that i like i am a role model and um i've got like people on social media we had a young girl Le uh, lethal lani um she traveled up all the way to the gym i think it was a four hour for our trip up, um, stayed the night in the hotel just to just to have an hour training session with us, and that's just like that is crazy to think someone's gone out of the way to do that. And I'm just a girl from Denneby. Um yeah, crazy. Don't beat yourself up too much. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for giving me some of your time. Good luck, you. and uh, yeah, let's hope you can keep the belt on your shore. Yes, hopefully. Now I'm <laughs> is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt.